Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot KDE Neon and Windows 11. So this is Windows 11. So we're using Windows 11 as the base. And this is going to be dual booting on a single drive, not across two drives. So we have here Ventoy, and this is a tool you'll need to be able to create the USB drive. So to follow along, get a blank USB drive, or if you've got a USB drive with data on it, copy the data off because it will be wiped. And you need it to be about eight gigabytes in size or larger. So plug that into your computer now, and then go to ventoy.net and click on downloads. And then click on the Ventoy for Windows zip file. And then click on this button here, which downloads the Windows zip file. And you'll see this will start downloading in a few seconds. So Ventoy is now downloaded. What we can do is we can go to our file explorer, go to our downloads, and we can click on the Ventoy file and go into this folder here. And we want to click extract all and then click extract. And this will open up another window and you want to go into the Ventoy folder and you want to click on this Ventoy to disk option. Click yes. And then you want to choose the drive you want to put Ventoy onto. So in this case, it's already picked up my portable drive. And all I'm going to do is click install. And it says the device will be formatted. So uh, it's important that there's nothing on there that you want to keep because it will be wiped. Click yes and then it'll double check and click yes again. And that's it, Ventoy has been created on your USB drive and we'll save that for later. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and get KDE Neon. And we go back to our web browser and we want to go to neon.kde.org. Now KDE Neon, it's straight from KDE. More than ever, people expect cutting edge features delivered right from their developers with no modifications or gatekeeping. KDE Neon delivers this by packaging the hottest software fresh from the KDE community the moment it's released. You should use KDE Neon if you are an adventurous KDE enthusiast who wants the latest and greatest from the KDE community as soon as it's available, with no delays, opinionated patches or UX changes. This is KDE software the way KDE designed it. So what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a raw KDE based distribution that's going to have all the latest KDE features. So it's going to stay up to date with everything KDE. So that's what the aim is here. And it says making community your own with Plasma Desktop. We think that your desktop is your desktop. Make it unique with the option to dive into every minimal detail from visuals to work patterns. Plasma Desktop from the KDE community is a smart, effective and beautiful environment from the very first time you start it. Using KDE Neon, Plasma and KDE applications will be continuously updated. So no more waiting, add in package archives or download in source code if you want what's new. So that's the sales pitch and here's the button that you need to click. So click on download now. There's a number of different versions available. There's the user edition, which is the one we'll be using. There's a testing edition, uh, an unstable edition and a developer edition. But we're going to use the user edition, which is the one that most people want. It's got a stable base and it's ideal for adventurous KDE enthusiasts. So click on this button here and you can see that's going to download in the top right corner. Whilst that's doing that, we can go and sort out the disk where we're going to put KDE Neon onto. So what you want to do is you want to click here and you want to type diskmgmt.msc and you'll see this create and format hard disk partitions. Just click on that. And that brings up your disk management tool. Now ignore disk zero because I'm not going to do anything with that. So the disk we're playing with today is disk one. And that's the disk that's got my windows on it. And you can see I've got an EFI partition. I've got this C drive, which is my windows partition. And then I've got a recovery partition. So over here, what I'm going to do is on the C partition, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click shrink volume. And it gives you the amount of space to shrink by. So you can see uh, my drive is 456 
gigabytes. Uh, so the size available to shrink is 324. That's what it's given me. But realistically, I want to save some for Windows. Obviously, don't type more than this amount number, but you can t certainly type less. So I'm going to uh, type in 100,000 megabytes, which is 100 gigabytes. And then I'm just going to click shrink. And 100 gigabytes is more than enough to be trying KDE Neon out. And now you can see we have the section of unallocated space and we can close this window. So if we go back to our browser and click in the downloads, you can see we've now got a downloaded file so we can close the web browser down. And we're at the final steps within Windows here. And what we need to do is open up a file explorer, go to our downloads folder, click on the Neon user, click on this copy button here, go down to Ventoy down here, and then click on this paste icon here. And that will copy KDE Neon to your USB drive. So the next step is to reboot your computer and boot into KDE Neon. Now what you have to do is click your start button and click here and restart normally but when the computer boots up as soon as it gets to the first text on the screen not windows the first text you know with the uh, name of the bias etc um, press the relevant function key to get into the boot menu now this differs from each manufacturer and you can google uh, make a model of your computer and ask for the boot key and it will give you the boot key and when you get to that screen just press that button uh, you can hit it repeatedly if you like and then it will come up with a boot menu so you can see the text has come up and I press the F7 key on my computer and it's going to enter the boot menu and I need to pick my USB drive it's a bit messy but there it is the integral portable I'm going to click that and you see Ventoy's come up and it's giving me one option neon and then I'm going to boot into normal mode and then I've got select the operating system so I'm going to choose KDE neon and that should take me into the live version of KDE neon where we can start the installer so what we're going to do is click on this install system up here. And we're going to choose our language, British English. Click next. It's already chosen where we are in the world, so we can just click next. It's already chosen the correct keyboard layout, so we can click next. And then we're going to choose the correct disk, which is this one. And we're going to do replace a partition and select a partition to install on. And we're going to choose this one here. And it's already chosen the EFI partition for us. So all we need to do now is click next. And then we can just create our user. So Now it says you can log in automatically. We're not going to check that. I don't think that's very secure. I never recommend clicking that. And all we're going to do now is click install. When the welcome center pops up, you can close that. You don't need that. And you can see it's now creating the partitions. It's going to install the system and it's going to do all the stuff. This can take a few minutes, uh, maybe 15 or so. So you can go and get a drink and do something else and come back in a short while. So the system has now installed and we can click this done button and you can see it's got a restart now and when you restart you're going to need to press the relevant function key to get into the BIOS and the reason for that is we need to change the boot order um, so it picks up the EFI partition that you've just installed onto so and you'll get a menu then that lets you choose between KDE Neon and Windows. Again the button that you have to press to get into the BIOS is different for each manufacturer so use Google to search for the make and model of your computer to work out which function key that is. So you can see it's asking us to remove the drive which we're going to do now and as the screen boots we're going to press the relevant function key in my case it's the escape key and you see it pops up on the screen anyway um, so what we're going to do now is go over to the boot menu now these screens can differ for each make and model but um, generally you've got a boot menu and I'm going to go down to the bottom to the hard disk priorities. 
and I'm going to go to the boot option and I'm going to scroll down until I see KDE Neon, click that and then I press F4 to save. Yes to exit. Now you can see KDE Neon is at the top here and you might think that well I've got Debian but where's my Windows? Well all you have to do is scroll down with the arrow keys and then you'll see Windows is there at the bottom along with your firmware settings. But we're going to boot into KDE Neon. Finally enter your password. And you will boot into KDE Neon. And here we are in KDE Neon. And this is the welcome screen and you can just step through this at your own leisure and it tells you a few things about KDE Neon, such as KDE Runner, KDE Connect, and things like that tells you how to find new apps and then you can just step through if you want to connect to the internet you go down here and your wireless connection should be here and your wired connection here uh, Bluetooth's down here um, but I'll leave you to explore KDE Neon at your leisure that is the end of the video but I'm going to give you one set of troubleshooting steps in case your windows didn't appear in your grub menu and what we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal and there's two things we're going to do here sudo nano etc default grub and you type in your password and you scroll down here and you make sure by default it might have a hash in front of it you need to make sure it doesn't have a hash in it and then you press Control o Control x and then you do sudo update grub and it's this line here that does all the work you can see it's found debian it's found windows and it's adding the items in and that will fix at your grub menu if it doesn't appear but that is the end of the video if you like it give a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time on everyday linux user